Understanding your shop's data is extremely important for any Etsy shop owner. Understanding these numbers and what they mean can really give you some insight as to how your business is doing and where you might be able to make some improvements. So knowing how to analyze these numbers is a must for any Etsy shop owner. In this video, I'm going to go over the different types of metrics that Etsy gives you and how you can analyze them so that you can take advantage of everything that they have to offer. So let's jump on into the computer and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that we're in the computer here, I'm here in my Etsy shop and we're gonna start in the dashboard. You can change the amount of time that you are um, looking at here. So you can do today, yesterday, seven days, 30 days, so on and so forth. I'm just gonna put the whole year on here so that I can make sure I have enough metrics to show you. Um, and the first thing I really wanna talk about is the difference between total views and visits because this can be confusing to people sometimes. Your visits are the number of people that have visited your shop, while your total views are the number of listings that have been viewed on your shop. So in other words, your total views should always be higher than your visits. So for example, if 20 people visited your shop and each of those visitors looked at two items, your visits would be 20, but your total views would be 40 because it would be your 20 visitors times the two items they each looked at to give you 40. You can reverse engineer these numbers if you want to calculate the average number of items that your customers are looking at. So you would just do your total views divided by your visits. Moving on over to orders. These are your total number of orders that you've had um, for the given time period. You may notice that this number, it does not reflect the same number as you might see on your actual shop. So if I change this to all time, you can see here it says orders 3207. And if you go to my shop here, it says 6,749. The reason for this difference is that for some reason, um, Etsy here shows you the items that were purchased, the listings that were purchased. So if some one customer came and purchased from you, it would show one order. If they ordered five items on that order, it would show you five here. The other difference, which might throw you off and used to throw me off at first, is if they order two of the same or multiples of the same item, it still only counts as one item. I know that's confusing. So an easy example is one customer comes and purchases one order, total order from your shop. They purchase one of product A and two of product B. The number of sales that will be reflected here is two for purchasing item A and B and one over here for a total number of orders. And then over here, we can see the revenue. And again, this revenue will look a little different than what we'll see in finances tab. This revenue is your total revenue minus any shipping income and also minus taxes. So that will your, be your revenue after that. But it has not had the fees taken out, just the shipping income. If you wanted to see your total revenue with the income for shipping that customers have paid you for shipping, which is personally the number I choose to go by, then you would go to finances and a payment account to see um, that number. And we will see that later on in the video. I will take you over there. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in the dashboard. So now let's head over to our stats and we'll take a look and let's do this year again. And we will take a look at what we have going on over here. This is where you're gonna look at most of your analytics. And we have visitors again and orders again. Um, but what's new here on this tab is the conversion rate. And this shows you how many visitors purchase from you. So if you have 100 visitors to your shop and three of them purchase from you, then you would have a 3% conversion rate. So obviously the higher, the better. A good conversion rate depends on your niche and industry, but on average, 
They say e-commerce is 2.9%. On Etsy, it's about 2 to 3%, and anything over 5 is considered excellent. Very quickly, I'll just say a few things that you can do to improve your conversion rates. The first thing you could do is make sure your pictures and descriptions are answering any questions that your customer might have. You could also make sure that your thumbnail is correctly representing the item you're selling. Be careful with mock-up images to make sure it's clear what the product is so that they don't get to your listing, only to find out it's not exactly what they thought that they were clicking on. The next point is to use flash sales. And these flash sales should be under 24 hours because this allows Etsy to put a countdown timer on your products. And this gives a sense of urgency. It encourages the customer to buy now. If the sale is a few days long, they might say, hey, I'm gonna come back and I'll purchase it later. I'll favorite it. And nine times out of 10, they're not gonna come back. So having this countdown timer helps to push them and say, I better do it now. Otherwise, will I remember to come back later? One last thing I wanted to mention that you can do is to offer free shipping whenever possible. Quite often, if a customer doesn't realize that they will be charged for shipping and they add an item to the cart and they see a shipping charge when they get to the cart, they won't follow through with the purchase. If you do charge for shipping, I find having a flat rate and making sure they know the amount will also help keep them from being surprised at checkout and abandoning cart. It's really just about knowing what they're getting into before they add it to cart and not having that shock that surprise like hey I was thinking I was gonna pay this much and now I'm gonna have to pay more because I have to pay for shipping nowadays because of Amazon everybody's gotten so used to not paying for shipping you'd be surprised how often people are surprised when they do get charged for shipping and I did want to mention here if you see this later you can compare to the previous year and this will show you how you did the previous year so you can see your growth year over year and if i jump back to the dashboard actually we will see the year over year here as well now just keep in mind that if you are just now opening your shop you're not going to have any numbers for last year so these are going to have some really crazy numbers here you can just go ahead and ignore those so moving down here and we're going to look at this section that is called how shoppers found you etsy breaks down the different ways that shoppers can find you and i will just quickly go through each and what they mean the first thing we're going to look at is etsy app and other etsy pages and this is basically visitors on the app and other pages like category pages home page editors picks favorites forums and more the next section here is etsy search and this is etsy search on browser only this is not going to include any searches on the app that's included up here in this one and then down here is etsy marketing and seo and that is off-site ads or coming from google okay so moving on over to the right side direct and other traffic that is coming directly to your shop by link and then we have social media and if you click this little drop down it will um, separate that out for you and it will show you your traffic from different social medias this will help you determine how well any efforts that you're making from a social media account are working if you only have an etsy shop driving traffic to your etsy account can be very helpful however if you have your own website as well I would always make sure you're sending traffic to the website instead of Etsy I'm um, driving traffic to your Etsy shop can help you get sales however it can be helping others get sales as well because you're driving them to Etsy where they can see your products and they can see other stores products at the bottom of your listings customers can easily move from one shop to another so I would just keep this in mind when you're putting your time and effort into growing your social media for the purposes of getting more sales but again if you only have the Etsy shop that's perfectly fine you're only gonna help yourself so go ahead if you have you know different social media accounts and post them and then you can just check here and see how many sales you're getting from each. This last down here is Etsy ads. If you run Etsy ads, you can see that this is for the whole year. I don't run a lot of Etsy ads, only during certain times of the year. Um, 
If you click this one, it's going to take you over to your ads campaign, which I don't currently have going. So I will show you another way how you can get in and see your actual analytics for the Etsy ads. Down here is where you see your offsite ads. Now you can opt in for this if you made less than $10,000 in the last year. If you made over $10,000 in the last year, you will be automatically opted in for these offsite ads and you're not allowed to turn it off. Etsy does not give you um, the option to do that. So if you wanted to go in here and you wanted, I haven't read ads, let's see, let's say this year, and you can come in here and they do explain a little bit up top, but they will come, when you come down here, they will show you the sales that were made, it will show you where it came from and when the sale was made and what the item and your total sale value here and your ad fee here. So they break it all down for you when you come in here. Now, before we move on, I do wanna show you that if you notice that all of these are clickable. So any one of these you can click on to get more information. So if we click on the first one here, you're going to get a graph. You can see the percentages up here of sales. And then you come down here and here are the two most important things. You are gonna see your top listings. And if you scroll down even more, the most important thing you're gonna see is the search terms. And so what you could do is you can use this and you can see what search terms that people are finding your products with, and then go back and make sure that any relevant items have those search terms in the title and the tags and the description, because you know that those are getting you views and those are getting you sales. So I would definitely take a look on this for each one and each one's going to show you specific to the section you clicked on and here in this page is where you can click on your advertising and that will take you to your etsy ads to show you the terms that you are coming up with for etsy ads and this is pretty important because when you look at these terms you're going to be able to determine how well your ads are working for you. If you are going in here and you are seeing a lot of crazy terms that have nothing to do with your products or very loosely to do with your products, there is a good chance that you have your budget set too high. And so what will happen there is if you have your budget set to $50 a day, if you're halfway through the day and Etsy's only used $20, $15 worth of your ad spend because people aren't searching those terms that you have set up on your um, items, then they're going to start expanding out those terms and trying to find customers to click on your ads because they want your ad spend. And obviously this is not going to be very good for you. You're going to be paying for clicks that are really not relevant to your products and then you're much less likely to actually make sales from those clicks. So if you see some wacky terms down here, you want to go and reassess your budget, see if you're getting to your budget each day and just, you know, analyze that a little bit more. And that's only if you're using Etsy ads. Um, some products, it's really, it's not worth it to use Etsy ads. It just depends on what you're selling and your average cost and um, how new you are and so on and so forth. So you can easily skip from one section to another if you want to see um, all of your different graphs and your different terms that are coming up from these different search areas. Again, if we go back to stats, you can click on any one of these and they're going to bring you right back to that same section there. But you will, if you want to see your ads information, you will not be able to click here. You will have to click one of these and then click advertising when you're in there. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, again, we're back to the stats page. If we scroll down a little bit more, it's just going to show you um, your top listings. Now you can sort, it automatically shows you views. So it's automatically going to show you the top views at the top here. And then you can go to the next page. You can sort by say revenue, or favorites, let's try revenue here and see what comes up. 
And now that I've sorted, sorted by revenue, it'll put it in order for that. But here's a little tricky thing that I did want to make sure to mention because it really threw me off the first time, the first few times um, I tried to look at this. I said, I scrolled down a little bit and I said, wait, I only have one, two, three, four, five items that I made sales on. That can't be right. Everything's zero down here. For whatever reason, I don't know if this is a glitch on Etsy or, or what the reasoning for this is, um, but you have to go to the second page and now you'll see at the top it will show you the next five here and then zero dollars so then you have to go to the next page and maybe there's something I'm doing wrong here um, but uh, since I can remember that this has always come up this way uh, but I just wanted you to keep that in mind so if you were looking you weren't thinking oh no I've only sold five items that's not right um, just go ahead and go through each page and look at the top five or however many that it's showing you. Now I want to go over and jump over to finances on the side here and then payment account. And here is where you will see the amount of money you have available for deposit right now. And if you come down here, and this is why I like to come over here and look at finances because it's going to actually break down your fees so if we look at all this year here in these sales and if you click down any of these little down arrows it's going to give you more detail about your sales refunds tax credit so you can see here that this amount is minus any refunds and minus any tax and then down here will show you marketing it will show you your Etsy ads you've run and it will show you any off-site ads that Etsy ran for you fees it will break down your listing fees transaction and processing fees and then shipping charges will be here this is if you use Etsy's shipping if you just purchase your shipping labels through Etsy that's what you're gonna see here and then here is going to be the total after all of these other fees and then if you scroll down you'll see recent activity it's really hard to look through these because they, every single item has so many different fees so every purchase it just gets really really long it's a little difficult to see so you're better off going to your monthly statements and you can look at any month here and you can look at for any year and then when we go in here you can download your csv file which will bring it into excel or google sheets and you should be able to look through that and sort through that way and that's a lot easier because you'll be able to sort by different types of fees or taxes or refunds or anything like that that you might want to look at i would go ahead and do it this way um, if you want to see svgs also um, you can find them if you go to settings and options and here you can pick different types of CSV files that you want to look at. You can do order items, orders total, and payment sales and payment deposits. And then pick the month and year and download it and bring it into Excel and sort and look through things that way. That's another way that you can get information. I actually use this section when I'm doing my bookkeeping. And then if you see here under web analytics, again, we're under settings, we're under settings and options. You can also connect um, Google Analytics account. I'm not going to get in how to look at your Google Analytics, but if you're wanting more um, data, to analyze, that is another option um, for you to do as well. And then the very last thing I wanted to show you, I don't know if everybody has this. If you go to marketing, there's here search analytics, but it's in beta, so I don't know how many people have this. Um, but if you come in here, it's going to show you um, more about your search terms um, for your traffic through Etsy search. And they do have a note up here as of right now, the data does include the Etsy app, but only for iOS and not Android at this point. So this may be why it's still in beta. It's not the, really the full picture, but you can get some ideas for terms that people are searching. You can see what in position in the search you are in. You can see how many visits. You can see your conversion rate for that particular keyword and any revenue that you've made 
and how many listings that, that you've come up with for that keyword. And, and once they have this working fully, I think this will be a really, really great tool to, um, to help you with keywords and SEO, which is, you know, basically one of the most important things on uh, Etsy to get found. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It would really help me out and I would be super, super grateful. And if you are interested in this type of content, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your Etsy shop.